harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Hey! Ho! To the bottom I go. To heal my heart and down my wall. When I fall in a big globe and I'll still be. And then I'm still go. We didn't even mean to do that there. It's just because I said, hey. And then oh, Billy said, oh, about to lie go. To hear my laugh and sound my love. Well, that I'm <laughs> not far <laughs> when they go. And I'll still be. And then I'll still go. go. That's quite Pavlovian, that, isn't it? That's it. I love Pavlova. It's lovely. Oh, it's tasty. It's a very uh, popular um, dish in New Zealand, which is strange because I think it came all the way from Russia. Yeah, via Scandinavia. To uh, New Zealand. But anyway, we're back this week, guys. We have our second part of our fantastic interview with the lovely Sam Regal from the legend of Vox Machina. Yes, and critical rule. Critical rule, indeed. Fantastic um, Sam, as we call him. But before we jump into that, yeah, let's. Uh, well, first of all, we need to tell you guys. Of course, you can always get hold of um, our merchandise at the FriendshipOnionPodcast.com. There's some fantastic things there to buy. I particularly like the hoodie. I like the hoodie too. And I did make a promise, and it's yet to happen. If I mm -hmm. see someone in the street come yep. over to me yep. with any Friendship Onion merch on them, I will take a picture of them and put it on my social media account. That could get tricky when we start going to these conventions because I'm assuming people will be wearing some Friendship Onion merch there. And we're also hoping to do some live conventions from the, pod from the uh, convention, which we're working on, right? I'm glad you said that, Dom, because I was just about to say, if I see anybody in merch... I will give them ten dollars <laughs> cash, but I won't do that because no, I no. just yeah. No. But yeah, take a uh, picture with them. Would anyone like to see the Friendship Onion live? I don't know. I would. Let us know. Yeah. Send us an email at thefriendshiponion at castmedia dot com. Peeling the onion. Housekeeping. How much fun are you? To keep the house so clean and true. Oh, lovely soft top. On you go, Bills. Right. Well, see Becky Wilson. I see you. Becky Wilson says it always makes me happy when non-New York folk try to pronounce some of the towns. She actually told us. Um, Becky Wilson has told us how to say it, and I still can't say it. Yeah, that's perfect. Benucky. Try the other two. Kana. Kanaguya. Kanaguya. Candida. You have to be careful with that. Painful. Scanialetis. Scanitales. Scanitales. There you go. We've done it. I think you will agree, Becky Wilson. We nailed those. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. We've had some wonderful comments on our YouTube channel. You can. Obviously, you don't need to just listen to us. You can watch us as well. And Great White Sharkosaurus Ooh. said on our YouTube uh, channel, I just found this uh, podcast through Critical Role. What's funny about that is that the Lord of the Rings formed my love for fantasy. It has come full circle. Crazy. It is crazy. Nick Sarander on YouTube says, this was chemically constructed in a laboratory for my exact interest. Well, I tell you what, Nick Sarander, You've got another. You've got another half of it right now. When we start talking to Sam, it's a strange uh, one for me because on, my then. best friend of all time, yeah. apart from you, Bills, obviously, yeah, yeah obviously, you, obviously yeah. is called Tom Murray, and yeah, we have a Thomas Murray. I, I would assume not my Thomas Murray. No. Wrote in and said, "Came here for Sam Regal, mm -hmm. stayed for the lovely banter of the legends that is Billy and Dom. Subscribe," he says, "not me." Although we agree, to subscribe. <laughs> it's very important. Uh, well, should we bring in Sam? Because I think it's about that time, isn't we it? We spoke to him for so long about a subject that we're all very interested in. And again, I need to reiterate this because it's so important for the podcast. If you're passionate about something, if you love talking about a particular subject, get in touch with us because we love talking to people who are passionate about things. You're passionate about... I'm just looking at the size of your water bottle. It's a whopper, isn't it? That looks like a scale double thing. For anyone just listening, the whopper that I was talking about was my um, water bottle. Yeah, it's a gallon a day. So I've been drinking a gallon a day for the last three or four days. And my God, my toilet's seen some action. 
Is that a gallon there? This I've is always, a gallon. I've always wondered how much a gallon is. Well, it's a gallon. A gallon is 128 fluid ounces or 3,800 milliliters. And uh, they say that when you start drinking a gallon like this, it takes about a week for your body to get used to it. So for the first week or so, yeah. there will be a significant amount of urination yeah. and then your body will get used to it. I feel hydrated. I feel slightly confused. I feel lonely and scared when I go to the toilet so much. I'm scared. Well, no wonder, but you look much sexier. Really? I would say 20 to 28% sexier on the eyes and the eyebrows. Oh, thanks. I'm going to say something here. And again, if you're only listening, don't be concerned. But would you mind if I suck it? No, go ahead. Okay, there we go. It's got a big straw on it. Mm. 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 I've noticed that from 11 till t uh, 1 and from 1 till 3... If I suck it 14 times, I get there. That was only four then. I Ten go. more to go. Go. Talk amongst yourselves. Go. Ooh. That is a Ooh. lot of water. Ooh. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a little dog and I, I reckon he could swim in there. Mm. 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 Uh. <sighs> <sighs> I don't, Let's I bring on good. Sam. Bring in Sam. <clears throat> Come on, Sam. It's great that that community can be so healthy and strong mm -hmm. and supportive, not only, you know, for what you guys were doing, but then when you guys come up with a different idea to extend the show, they're like, well, here, let's, let's help you yeah. make it. Yeah. You know, that's brilliant. Yeah, they're the best. I, um, brilliant. I also played a character in this recent Call of Duty game with Laura Bailey. Hey, that's my friend. Yeah, uh, who has a fantastic voice and is, and is a brilliant actor. And she was telling me all about the, the story of, of Critical Role. And I think it was around about that time that you guys got in contact with me and were like, hey, we have this character. It could be, yeah. Are you into yeah, it? she might have pitched you. I, 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 I can't remember how it, how it first came up, but uh, you're fantastic in the show, by the oh, way. Uh, everyone, I, I think, I mean, I don't know when this episode of your podcast airs, but I, while, while we are recording this, we are mere hours away from your character uh, making his first appearance. In yeah, the there's been a couple of minor little teases that I've seen online, which is really cool. And also the great thing is so many people have got in touch with me and said, is that really you? Is that yeah. really your voice? Because obviously I'm doing a kind of gruff Scotsman voice, very different from the way that I normally speak. Archibald Desney, who was slightly redesigned. Totally redesigned. Guys, right? He was an old man in the original campaign. Oh, wow. uh, and we were like... Who wants to see an, an old man run around with a sword? We, let's make him young and vital and, and swashbuckly and awesome. And so I just, I just saw a clip of it this morning. Oh, it's yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Your Scottish accent is fantastic. It's very, yeah. very natural. I, th I thought if he's lived a life of being a warrior and he's got a couple of kind of nicks and cuts on him and his hair's long and he has no vanity and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to make his voice as grounded as I can make it. Because yeah. in that group, you've obviously got so many different dynamic characters. And it seems like Archibald sometimes can, can express a little bit of frustration of like, hey, guys, let's concentrate. We're in real trouble here. We, <laughs> yeah. need, you know, we need to like fight to stay alive. Yeah. I get that there's some quips coming in and there's some dynamics that are messing around, but let's concentrate. So I thought... I don't want to make him entirely serious, but I want his voice to be a little bit more the voice of kind of combat reason. Like, totally. Right, come on, let's cater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not a sourpuss and he's not too serious, but he is to the point. He's like, all right, all right, yeah, enough caters. round. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some great moments when I, was, when I was putting down the voice with you guys where you guys had said, what would a Scotsman say here? Oh, and obviously yeah. I've been friends with Billy for so long that I, I was thinking, well, what would Billy say in that situation? You allowed me to to call someone a dauber at some. We point. did. I don't. I still don't. So I still don't know what that is. But it's yeah, in, it's in the show. If you need um, to know any Scottish phrases, my wife has a company called Gallus Life. What's Look at this. this? I'm What's wearing, this? I'm wearing oh, uh, Billy's oh. wife's t-shirt today. Uh, okay. Can, can I clap your dog? Can I means... clap your dog? Yes, which basically <laughs> means can I pet your dog? Oh. And it's a nice thing to say to someone if you meet someone with a dog. Don't just go ahead and clap it. You've got to you ask. Gotta ask Can I consent. Clap the yeah. One of yeah. my favorite t-shirts, because now, nowadays t-shirts, I find t-shirts very hard to fit. They tend to be baggy here at the arm or too long. This t-shirt fits me like a dream. Your wife's website to find stuff is? Gallus Life. 
if you ever gone to Gallus Life, it will tell you all the. Di- it might not have Dauber on there. Probably not. Oh, she should do a Dauber. <laughs> she should do a Dauber shirt. <laughs> Ali, Dauber, do Dauber a Dauber. shorts. Yeah, Dauber but, shorts. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> but there's a lot of Scottish phrases up there. You'll enjoy it. You should have a look on I your will, I will definitely. I'll get some of her merch and I'll bring you some of our shirts. Can we stuff. talk about your shirt for a oh, second? This, yeah, just me. It. It's me on a shirt. I, uh, what, what could be more egotistical than this? As soon as I saw you, I was like, oh, did you bring us one? No. No, I No, don't. you did not. I, I, they, they cost too much. I'm not saying <laughs> of, course, of course I'll get you some. I need your sizes and stuff. Yeah, let's I, do that. I also... I. I've never met you in person, even though you were on the show. Yeah. We, we it was pandemic times. Right. This is the first time I've ever laid eyes on you in yeah. person. We were all always over Zoom. I don't know if you're six foot eight. Yeah. I don't know if you're five foot two. I don't know nothing. He's, he's very beautiful, I'm, isn't he? He's thank, gorgeous, face to face. Yeah, I'm petite. Both. I always wear my t shirt small, like a little smaller than they should be. I like mm-hmm. things tight, tight. Oh, <laughs> so I'm all, uh, I'm very small. But that's another thing to touch upon, uh, Sam. Is the pandemic? Yeah, actually, kind of forced certainly for me uh m- much more voice acting than i expected to be doing yeah, i've right. obviously done peppered a little bit of voice acting throughout my career but during you know kind of the the more serious isolated times of uh the pandemic when you guys reached out to me it was made very clear listen you're going to go into a studio there'll be no one in that studio with mm-hmm. you everything will be sanitized there'll be a technician who will never come into the studio with you You'll have a COVID test when you show up. You'll you'll be expected to do, you know, be cleaning your hands, not touch certain things, leave your phone yeah, in a certain scary. place. Yeah, it was all very <laughs> safe. But it all, I also remember leaving those sessions thinking, is this the future? You know, mm-hmm. in, for the next couple of years or so, is this really the only thing as actors that we'll be doing? We'll be going into these sanitized areas. Because it was the same with with Call of Duty. No one was allowed to take their, yeah. their face masks off until the last minute. None of the technicians could take their face masks off throughout the course of the entire day. It was only when you were acting that you could do it. And I remember thinking, is this, is this where we've got to now? You know? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I mean, it's slightly resetting back, maybe. Uh, yeah, but you don't know. I mean, we don't know. I, Until a new I, I also, shows up. like, I also uh, direct a lot of voiceover uh, in my career. And I haven't been to a studio since the pandemic started because now I just direct actors from. Mm my home, but also most of the actors are are in their homes. Ooh. So I've gotten to see over the course of the last two years, a lot of people's houses. Like I, I feel like <laughs> every time I direct a, a cartoon or anything, uh, I get I get a little glimpse into their world. Like yeah. are they, are are we in someone's closet today or are we in their weird converted garage? And are yeah. we gonna see dogs in the background? Or oh, I mean <laughs> some of those amazing funny moments that happened with people during uh, during the the um COVID lockdown with, yeah. with Zooms, you know, little kids running in and then them try to send them out of the room. Or the guy who was a cat. I mean, that's... Yeah, that was great. Oh, that was that. Nice. I, was like, hey. I just love the fact that it's not a young kid or someone that can laugh it off and say, oh, guys, I'm sorry. I've got a filter on my face. We can't work it out. Let's just do the meeting. The guy's like, oh, I'm not a cat. <laughs> Don't get judge. Billy and Dom eat the world. Oh, so cute. Hey, well, Sam, we could talk to you all day. Okay. But. Oh, okay. There was a but. There I wasn't but. expecting that. I'm <laughs> getting very hungry. Oh, great. Okay. And uh, every every week on uh, the Friendship Onion, we have a billion dom eat the world, where we try to get some food from a, d- a different place in the world, or maybe from someone's uh, childhood, something that reminds them of something. Uh, so we asked you to bring in some food. And uh, if you could, you explain what you brought in for? Sure, us? sure. I, 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 uh, I, <coughs> I had to think fast because I do like a lot of different food. And uh, total transparency, I'm a bit of a food snob, so the <laughs> the stuff I like is is quite expensive. But I, I, I wanted to bring in some matzo ball soup because uh, it reminds me of my oma, my grandma, uh, who was. Uh, she escaped World War II Germany. She, really? you know, she, and she, and uh, she, she uh, came to this country with not much uh, except for her recipes and her plucky outlook on life. And I just remember loving her matzo ball soup. And when I, when I moved to Los Angeles, I moved to uh, an apartment building that was right next to this deli called Cantor's Deli. <gasps> And one of the first meals I had in LA was this matzo ball soup that they have there. 
uh, which which I was like, this is a sign. I, it feels comfortable mm -hmm. and reassuring. And it's like I'm being watched over. I don't know. I just love it so much. And I thought you guys might like it too. And is Brilliant. that is it is it right? I'm sure I read somewhere that that's where the uh, the delis came from. Was the Jewish people coming over from Europe, getting to New York, and th there was no food that they wanted sure. to eat. So they, yeah, that sounds right. Cats. These delis opened up with all this wonderful food. Yeah, that sounds about right. To 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 remember where they where they came from. Yeah, and and I I remember having uh, a lot of things growing up that I don't think many kids would find appealing you know the white fishes and gefilte fishes mm, yeah. of the world and mm -hmm. but i loved them i thought they were great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it seemed normal to me no one has a business like yours with all its strengths and challenges to succeed you need a hiring partner that adapts to your needs that's indeed if you're hiring you need indeed because indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract interview and hire all in one place and indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all indeed partners with you in every step of the hiring process find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match assessments and virtual interviews. Mm -hmm. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. One of the really great features is Instant Match. Over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash onion. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash onion to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash onion. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. People focus on fitness early in the year and the trail runner SWT is the first ever running shoe designed for running on trails that is sustainably made and designed for durability, comfort, and performance. Ever since I've got my old bird shoes, I wear them all the time. I absolutely love them. I love them as well, Dom. I know. I noticed you get red ones. Oh, yeah. I got blue ones. Mm -hmm. But they are absolutely fantastic. I really love them. The trail runners are one of the best pair of shoes I've ever had. Mm. So comfortable. Weatherproof as well, which I like because hey. we have had a little bit of rain recently in LA and uh, you don't get your feet wet, which is fantastic. That's All great. birds rigorously road test the trail runner SWT with over 2,000 miles and 100 runners of all age, abilities, and body types. They're durable, water repellent. As I said, they have a finish on them that helps keep the water out and keeps your shoes from getting soggy. Designed for trail running, the trail runner SWT also makes a fantastic hiking shoe. And to make you feel even better about them, Dom, Allbirds is a B corporation, making the environment a stakeholder in their business. They know we can create a more sustainable future, but only if we hold ourselves accountable. Hit the trails in the Allbirds Trail Runner SWT. Find your pair at allbirds.com. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Cantor's Deli is, is an iconic place to eat if you're ever in Los Angeles. And I remember Elijah taking me there when I was on holiday during Rings. We went to Cantor's Deli. This is back when I was eating much more meat than I do now. We ordered a Reuben. The Reuben's at Cantor's. Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's this thick, the sandwich, full of corned beef and, and, and pastrami. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And then I also ordered an egg cream. Oh, sure. Which is a... <laughs> which is a it's a strange drink when you think of it. I mean, it. I don't think really that's tasty. a particularly Jewish drink, but it is certainly, it's a deli drink. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's essentially a fizzy chocolate milk with egg white on the top. Is yeah, that, that sounds right. Oh, it's, no. It, no, no, it's good. It sounds crazy. It's good. And then from my pudding or dessert, for the first time ever, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 
You had never had that? Never had it. We don't Wait. have it in Britain, really. You don't? Not, not, re really. not in the same way that no. you guys oh, do. Oh, it's the best. Oh, it's super, I, super I, great. I don't know if I'd have a sandwich as a dessert. Well, I just wanted, I was like, oh my God, peanut butter and at the time I was saying jam, peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Never had one. And Elijah being Elijah, who's enthused about everything. Oh my God, you got to have one. You got to have one right now. <laughs> I was like, all right. So we ordered one of those. But matzo ball soup, correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, is one of the more iconic Jewish dishes. For is that sure. Right? Yes, yes. Like yeah. you said, gefilte fish. And yeah. What else is in that? Is in a matzo ball soup? No, in, in kind of… In the pantheon yeah. of, of Jewish what's cuisine. That, what's that bread called nice. that you rip apart? It comes in… Like oh, uh, 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 challah. Challah. Well done. Well challah. done. You were searching for that for a I second. I was. I haven't had it in so long. Probably 20 <laughs> years. Uh, yeah, they do a good challah French toast there. Are we, are we it's eating… It's coming in. We are now going to eat… Live, right live on camera. Yes. yes. That's disgusting. Well, are you, people going to watch us? Is this, yes. a, fe yeah, is, is this a fetish thing? Are no, people... they will, honestly, <laughs> people will watch it. They watch Dungeons and Dragons from I what I hear. I suppose so. Here comes Johnny Close yeah, with the soup. This. Oh my God. Now, oh, there's a Hiya, lot of gobbins. Oh there's a lot of gobbins. What is a gobbin? Mm. Gobbins is like stuff. <laughs> oh, it's like yeah. stuff. Is there, are there so spoons have about, you. John? Oh, they're on their way. Please. I feel oh, as if I'm going it. to be wearing this oh, queen wow. soon. I'm going to put the, mine they, on the floor. The matzo ball is separate from the soup on mine. Oh, Whoa, yours are oh, coming. It's the same. Oh, God. Oh, it's, God. Because it's so gigantic, they oh, can't even fit it in the… You don't… The, now, oh. also, also, rye bread is something that's sure. essential with this thing. Sure. Now, hold up. Now, I'm going to read some stuff about the matzo ball. Oh, you've got research on matzo ball soup? Well, oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Now, it says here… The, dum the dumplings or matzo balls were not oh. always called matzo balls. They what were, were they called, Doc? I'll tell you. They were called knudel. Uh, knudel. Uh, that's what the Germans, Austrians, and Noodle. That's what the Germans, Austrians, and Alsatians, so uh, dogs used to drink. Oh, so, and Alsatians used to call them. When Jewish people moved to Thailand, uh, Thailand, what is wrong with me? Poland. Oh. When I didn't realize there was a strong Jewish population <laughs> in Thailand. When Jewish people moved to Poland, they mm. referred to them as Canodela. Mm. Okay. And in the 1930s, the United States Manischewitz Company. Man Manischewitz? Manischewitz. I'm sorry. <laughs> My Jewish pronunciation is I'm, I'm the Jewish to English but, translator. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> they started packaging the product and calling them Alsatian feathery balls. That's, oh, they like should have stuck with that. Sounds like a condition. <laughs> Nathan, whoever Nathan is, says it was probably U.S. comedians and vaudeville performers that eventually called the dumplings matzo balls. Now, do you know where the where the etymology of matzo comes from? What's matzo about? Matzo is just that flat bread that uh, ah. that we ah. that we Jews had to eat while crossing the desert to escape Pharaoh. Listen, guys, I'm. I have Jewish heritage, but I am not a Jewish expert. Okay. I, should, I should be fully up. No, we're, we're with not that gonna right. get, we're not giving you big questions about this. We're I've, just eating some food. I've but, never asked a grown man this before, but what should I do with my balls? You should take your balls. Yeah. You should scoop out a nice feathery ball. Yeah. And uh, just a chunk of your feathery ball and put it in the soup and, and eat it in, that in the soup. Really part. Is, is it lovely? Dom. Lovely. It, honestly, it's not it's much lighter than you would expect. Mm -hmm. And it's bread, is it? It's matzo, yeah, matzo is it? It unleavened bread. It doesn't, it doesn't rise like bread because they mm -hmm. didn't have yeast in the desert. Is that right? Yeast, no, so no, no, no so. infections then. <laughs> yeah, they were very clean crotches in, in, uh, on that journey. Do you make sure. this? I don't, but my wife, who's Vietnamese, does. Oh, so she makes pho as well. She also makes pho, yes. That's the, connect, that's the correct pronunciation, right? Because a lot of people call it pho. It's not pho. And, and in fact, if, if I'm, I'm gonna, I'm also full disclosure, not a Vietnamese expert, guys. Yeah. But uh, uh, there is a, there is an upswing pho. Pho. It's almost like a question mark. So people, who, people who pronounce it wrong are pho. Yes. Pho. <laughs> pho. Pho. Hey, right, I'm gonna have a taste of this, Bill. Please, Dom, do. you're gonna love it. Now you're saying your grand used to make this. Where did she come from in Germany? She came from Heidelberg. Oh, Heidelberg. Uh, okay, nice, lovely. lovely tobogganing there. Uh, mm. um, but she came here, you know, when when the big yeah. diaspora happened, and uh, she was my oma, and she was great. When I was a kid actor, I was a child actor. Um, I was on a national tour of a of a play, and she came on the whole national tour with me oh, for a year and a oh, half as a chaperone, oh, as, wow. as my chaperone. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, me and brilliant. my sister and her. That's brilliant. Yeah. And would she make you food a lot? That's a kind of 
Yes, absolutely. Um, although we did do a lot of hotel living. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, she was awesome. And she was a painter, and I love her. Oh, um, my grandma was oh, extra. My grandma taught me how to knit when I had my tonsils out, but I was quite a shoddy knitter. And also, so she was disappointed with that. And then at the same time, it's kind of a dark moment for my uh, grandma and I, um, she asked me, um, hey, what's your favorite part of the Bible? Now, oh, I, was only, oh I was only 13 at the okay. time. How do you choose, right? I mean, there's so many good spots. Well, uh, so as a 13-year-old boy, there are certain things in the Bible that I found more dynamic than others, like, you know, Daniel and the lion and, and the parting of the, the sea and all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately, I plumbed for, well, my favorite part of the Bible is where Jesus gets crucified. Mm -hmm. I got trouble um, <laughs> off my grandma for that, and she complained to my mum that I was like a, a bloodthirsty in some way. Oh, God. We should Aww. probably leave Christ there for Yeah, a we'll leave it there for <laughs> a moment. Let's come back and get back to food. Speaking, but, uh, speaking not of any of this, yes. um, you mentioned Elijah before. Yes. Um, uh, I, the Woodster. And I, I, I remembered a connection that not many, I think, uh, actors share, but I, I've, I'm told that you, you both, and Elijah and maybe Sean all have matching tattoos. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm. Are they visible? Yes. Main, yeah. It's, well, it's, it's yours is. Yeah. It's myself, Elijah, Sean, Billy, Orlando, Vigo, Ian McKellen, John Reese Davis's stunt double, oh. Sean Bean. Yeah, Sean Bean. All nine of the fellowship. All nine of the fellowship. Amazing. And then a very cool thing happened when we went back to New Zealand a couple of years later. Pete Jackson very proudly showed us a tattoo that he got, which instead of the number nine, which we got, he got the number 10. Oh. As a kind of like, you know. Just outside the group. Piggybacking but part of, on, on but the part group. Of the right here. Member. So that, mean, that means the number nine in Amazing. Elvish, High Elvish, I think, right? Yes. High Elvish. Which is the language that only the kings and queens and Amazing. royal court in the Elvish community. The, the reason I bring this up is me and my, my fellows, my, my, my group of critical role. Yeah. To emulate you, we all got matching tattoos. Really? Yeah. You did you, I was just about to say, you guys should do we that. We did. We have Vox Machina tattoos, oh. each of us. I, I'd have to like take off my shirt oh. to show you, but it's, it's, on, it's on my have, uh, shoulder blade. Have you all got it on the same place? Or? No, no. Some of us got it on their arms. I think someone has it on their calf. I have it on my back. But yeah, and, we did have, the same thing. How many actors are involved? Eight. In so there's eight. We've got nine. Oh, yeah, yeah so I guess you're, you're, one, you're one better, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Billy's and, is on his foot. Yeah, mine is on my foot because th oh. that job was a lot to do with feet. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's We that's got true. feet glued on every day for like that's four true. years. Were those shoes, those feet? No. They were sort of like slippers, rubber slippers. slippers. And then they'd have to do the edges and fade it all in. It took an hour every day to put them on. It was hard work. Anyway, guys, back to the soup for a oh, second. Oh, God, mm. so good. It's fantastic. It yeah. goes really well with rye bread. It just complements it really well. But also, am I, would I be right in thinking that this is a great thing if someone's got the sniffles, if someone's got for a cold sure. or something? Chicken soup for the soul. Yes. That, you would, the, as a child, I would look forward to getting sick uh, just so I could get some more of that sweet Those sweet Those bread food. bowls are good, though. Would you say that's a good one? or an, an, It's fantastic. Yeah, this I think great. that's... It's, a, it's an absolute delight, Dom. Yeah, you've always loved bowls. I do, you. but those are very fluffy, much fluffier than I would do. I, I think it's the first time I've ever had this. Really? Really? Yeah, I've never had, well, is it matza? Matza, yeah. Matza. I've never had the bowls before, mm -hmm. and that that that's maybe the best part. You know what it's like? In Scotland, we have dumplings. Okay. And and we put it like with mince and potatoes, mm -hmm. and I don't know how you make those, but my gran used to make those. And they were so fluffy, and yeah, that that was a major thing for me growing mm -hmm. up, and that reminds me of it. You Gr grew up. Um, uh, well, when did you move out of Scotland? Well, only uh, I only moved to America like um, about eight years ago. Oh, and I still go back to Scotland. Oh wow! Time. But my grandmother was the same, always making, and she would make weird stuff hmm? like um, uh, pigs' feet. Mm. Trotters. Yeah, tr that kind of thing. And Trotters. Uh, weird stuff. And she lived to 100. And she she wow. would never... Good genes. She mm -hmm. would never um, let any food go to waste. I remember once uh, she had a big thing of about 14 sausages in her, her fridge. Uh -huh. And I said, Gran, these are out of date, like way out of date. <laughs> these are like two months out of date. And she cooked them up and ate everyone. You don't want to waste? You get but enough. It comes from a time where you can't, yeah. you can't waste. Exactly. <laughs> but, 
14 out of date <laughs> sausages and you live to 100? <laughs> Maybe that's a secret. Maybe it is. When milk used to go off, she would keep it till it went really off and like started to like solidify. And then she would call it buttermilk no. and drink it. No, no. Yeah. That's, that's sour. That's uh. gone bad. I know, Tom. That's what I'm telling you. It's gone bad. She lived to 100. That's incredible. Yeah, I know. I bet she had some really healthy gut flora. If she's drinking... <laughs> for sure. If she's drinking soured milk. Do you know what I mean? And sausages by the dozen. Ah, oh, that's insane. But who knows? Maybe she would have lived to 120 if she hadn't been eating yeah. that stuff. Yeah, we don't know. That's <laughs> true. She's still alive now, 200 yeah. and something. My grandparents used to, as far as I know, I'll have to ask my, my beat mom you about up. Yeah, they used to beat me to within Can't an blame inch them. of my life. Um, no, they used to fry eh? cheese. Just like a block of cheese in a pan until it became like liquefied cheese. And then pour that into soup bowls and eat that. What? Dom, a block of cheese? You're <laughs> listening to me and Sam talking about our grands and now you're just making up stories. It's true. We'll get my mum on to confirm that. It was a block of cheese. <laughs> it like, was not a block it, of cheese. It was. <laughs> it was. It was. It's like a block of cheddar and they would fry it until it became liquid and then pour that into soup bowls. And eat that. That's not soup. That's just a that's sauce. Cheese. And also, I love that. Doesn't it revert back to cheese very quickly? Sure. Like, doesn't it become solidified very quickly? <laughs> Mental. Okay, we'll start this with a round of applause. Because today I'm excited to announce that Manscaped has launched their ultra premium collection. Wow. Believe it or not, it's not just for your private parts. I'm talking about a leveled up hygiene routine with your favorite manly scent. And I've tried this, Dom, mm. and it smells fantastic. Mm -hmm. There's the body stuff, there's the shampoo. It is great. All-in-one skin and hair care kit for everyday man that covers you from head to toe. Manscaped is trusted below the waist, now trust it with the rest. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code ONION. Wow, we all know how essential the Manscaped TM Lawn Mower 4.0 is for that precise trim below the waist. Their advanced skin-safe technology reduce cuts to your most delicate of areas. It also includes the hydrating body moisturizer, mm -hmm. the body wash, a two-in-one shampoo and oh. conditioner to make your showering very easily, plus a free gift, a three-pack set of lip balm that's made up with ingredients such as vitamin E, peppermint, eucalyptus oil to keep those chappers feeling moist. I really think they've done a great job with this, Tom. I think this stuff is real high quality. I really like all of it. Smells fantastic. And that's four products plus a gift inside the Ultra Premium Collection. What a score. All of these products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, vegan-friendly, and dye-free. The best ingredients with zero compromise. Get that Ultra Premium Collection hot off the shelves. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code ONION at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code ONION at manscaped.com. The power of attraction is now in a bottle, thanks to Manscaped. Gaps in the diet shouldn't be ignored. Over 97% of men aged 19 to 50 are not getting enough vitamin D from their diet, and 95% are not getting the recommended daily intake of key omega-3s. Rituals Essential for Men 18 Plus Multivitamin was formulated by exhaustive research to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of men aged 18 plus. It is formulated with nutrients to help support brain health, bone health, blood health, and provide antioxidant support. But Ritual doesn't stop there. They invested in a gold standard university-led clinical trial to prove the impact of Essentials for Men 18 Plus Multivitamin. The results... Essential for Men 18 Plus was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in 12 weeks. The clinical study was published in leading scientific journal Frontiers in Nutrition. A published clinical study is a big deal and a serious commitment to a first-of-a-kind standard in the industry. Ritual is committed to third-party testing from USP and the non-GMO project, traceable and vegan-friendly ingredients, and always clear communication. No shady stuff. Mm, that's great news. I have to say, Billy, when I have a regular uh, ritual of taking a multivitamin every day, I feel fantastic. 
And it kind of helps me avoid little things like maybe a sore throat here and there or a cold because you're getting all the stuff that you need on a regular basis. And if you're not sure if you're getting enough sun or you're not getting enough uh, vegetables in your diet, get your Ritual. Right now, Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off for your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash onion and turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com slash onion. And hey, more stuff about um, matzo balls. Oh, we're doing a deep dive. Yeah, we're doing a deep dive. The whole matzo landscape shifted when the Manischewitz, is that right? Could be, yeah. Thank you. When the Manischewitz company burst onto the scene, like Micah Richards, according to Label's table, this food company started operations back in eight, excuse me, 1888, wow, and began mass producing its signature matzo in order to placate Jewish people who didn't approve of the commercialization of the sacred bread. The founder of the company journeyed to Israel to study the Talmud. The Talmud, yes. For 13 years, winning over naysayers. Now, what is the Talmud? It's one of it's the... like an old cookery book. <laughs> it's not a cookbook. It is, it is this, uh, one of the central books of the Jewish faith. Ah, so for him to be more of a kind of uh, le- legitimate person that could make the matzah ball, he studied the Jewish I guess, I guess so, yes. Wow. I'll tell you what, I love, can we give it some points? Can Are we, we give done? it scores? Really? Wait, do you guys rate the food yes. that you're getting? Yeah, we rate it. Tell him. Whoa, tell whoa, Sam whoa, whoa, What if this is terribly embarrassing for him? No, for, it's fantastic. Well, it could be, but I'll tell you what, my <laughs> chin is wet because I've been eating it so much. You've covered the mic in grease. I don't care, Dom. It's delicious. <laughs> it is. It's I've delicious. actually finished my matzo ball. Yeah, it's delicious hey. and nutritious. So, so here's how we mark it. There's three categories, okay. Sam. Categories. One flavor, obviously, we have to and talk or about. taste and or taste. Sure, sure. Then there's aesthetics, okay, and or looks, mm-hmm. and then the third one, my particular favorite category, is usefulness. Usefulness. Mm-hmm. How useful is? Oh, this food? interesting. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. And that would be like if you use it for occasions or to. Well, yeah, this is really okay, for well, I me. Guess that's for you guys to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be, you know, for instance, we got. A, jardinera is a sort of spicy thing that we did on here once. Okay. And it's like um, chilies and an oil. And, and you could put it in eggs and you could put it on wow. pizza. And you could make things with it. And it, that got a high usefulness. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I got it. But first off, taste. taste. I'm going to go first because I thought it was wonderful. You dog. loved it. A burp there. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> you can put points on it and it's out of 10. Okay. 9.8. Holy crap. Wow. That's big. I was, I was two off a perfect 10. I was hungry, Dom. And the ball, the matzo ball, was much more beautiful and a great texture than I expected. Whenever I saw it, I thought it looked heavy, but that was beautiful and light, and I'll definitely have that again. 9.8. Wow. So what, one of the things to, it's important to know about Billy is he's a simple man. Sure. He likes, si- not, not, you're not a simpleton. No, I'm a simple he man. He likes simple things. You know, wake up, a cup of coffee, maybe go for a walk on the beach, keep life simple, no simple. drama, no bullshit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think this soup uh-huh. speaks to your personality. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. simple. It's noodles. I know what it is. It's some broth. It's balls. <laughs> you love balls. I love it. Oh, I love balls. So, this is fantastic. Do you want to give it a score out of 10, Sam? Well, I, I mean, yeah, you're, I, you're, I'm, I'm going to be 10 across the board. 10! Probably. Yeah, I mean, I brought it I brought it in. This is my favorite. Okay, stuff, well, got, of course. Got it got it Would you say it's your favorite soup of all time? Yeah. This this soup is very special to me, matzo ball soup, and also pho. I was going to say, being married to a Vietnamese uh-huh. lady, they're big on liquidy, soupy, yes. curry things. If right? I could only eat those two soups for the rest of my life, I'd be happy. <sighs> gazpacho for me. I'm in love with gazpacho. Oh, really? I love it. And also in, in Barcelona, they do a, a slight uh, kind of different vibe with gazpacho. It's called salmorejo. Ooh. And they add uh, s- some Sexy. egg and some onion and some peppers and on a hot Spanish day when you've been sweating and you're losing some salt. Oh, gazpacho. And also the, that Thai soup that we Dom, eat. what? Give it a score. I'm so excited about this liquid I've been here stuff. for about three hours. Sorry. Score. I'm going to give it, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative sure, than sure. you guys. No, I liked it. But 9.8. Oh, Come God. on. Um, <laughs> eight. I'm going to give it an 8.1. 
Well, that's all right, actually. That's 81. That's very hours. good. I won't tell my dead grandmother oh, God. what you said. No, don't, don't. About that. Thank you, Omar. Now, aesthetics, the look. Well, it's it's nice, isn't it? I mean, it's, it? a, it's, I mean, a, it's a noodle a, soup. It's a noodle soup. Noodle I, don't, I don't, I don't like that the um, the, the the carrots are little little blocks. Okay. What would you prefer, Julianne? Ripped or something. Yeah. Ripped. What a ripped a ri- carrot. Like what is a, a what is a ripped carrot? carrot? What's wrong? How do you rip a carrot? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'd like to see that shredded. Do you mean? No, no, kind no of, ripped. Uh, Different different sizes. I don't like it when it looks as if it's came out a, a like machine. a can, you know, yeah, a machine. machine. Yeah, yeah. So well, as aesthetics, but I did, and it, actually the matzo ball tastes and feels in your mouth <laughs> much better than it looks. It yeah. looks like a a, a, a a testicle, like a gigantic so, testicle. Yeah, it's not like uh, a dragon's ball. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I really can't give it a high. Absolutely. I'm only going to give it a six point two. Mm. That's totally fair. Okay. Um, you're giving it ten across the board. No, too. no, no. Okay. I, I, right, I, right. I, I got. I got to. I got to be realistic here. This okay. is not a good looking soup. It's not the best looking <laughs> soup. It's nowhere near as good looking as it is good tasting. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a six point five for looks. I like the balls right, though. So, yeah. I do like the balls. Yeah, I'll throw on an eight just because. Cool. Like, well, I think that's all right. I like looking at a nice meaty bu- ball. Yeah. yeah, it would look better. Now, usefulness. First of all, it seems to be at the top of the list. If you were to get a cold or something like For that, sure. you just race to to a, a, mm-hmm. a deli and get some matzo ball soup. Doesn't have a ton of other uses other than you know just. I eating. mean, you're not really, you're not going to make a pie out of it. No, no definitely not. No, you can't you're put not it in going cake. to. Freeze it and make an ice pop. No no, 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 definitely not. I like to think, this is one of my things, can I take it to a sporting event? Definitely like, not. No. And, 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 can you, know. you share it with people? I mean, you're not all going to have spoons. And certainly not in the days of COVID. I mean, I guess if you went to a sporting event and you had one of those helmets with the mm-hmm. straws that oh, went yeah. into your head, yeah. one, one half could be the matzo ball and one half could be the soup. I don't know. The matzo but, ball would need to be a thick, Tube, wouldn't yeah, it? you could. Like, oh, sorry, you'd oh, have sorry. to like slice yeah. it up and stuff so the little mm. bits could come down. That's when the ripped carrots would come in handy. The ripped carrots. God, they're ripped. Um, so I don't. I can't give it a high one. It's not massive for usefulness, but other, but very. I mean, it can only be a five point one. I'm afraid. That's fair. That's fair. It's not. Taste is at the top. Sam. I'll, I'll throw in, I still uh, thought that it was very useful for me personally mm-hmm. and reminding me of home. Mm-hmm. So I'll give it a seven and a half for no, usefulness. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give it a seven and a half too. It does exactly what it says it's going to do. Makes you feel comfy and great inside, but it doesn't do a huge amount else. No. But I do love it. Thanks, Thanks for bringing that, Oh, Sam. thank you for eating eating my balls. Hey! <laughs> I mean, you've enjoyed some Billy and Dom Eat the World stuff before. I would say that's in the top four or five of most infused I've seen you with the food. It was that's really great. delicious, Tom. I did really love it. And the matzo ball was much, much better than I thought it was going to be. Awesome. Imagine the next time you, you're coming down with a little bit of a head cold and you mm. don't really feel like going out and you say to your son, hey, son, mm-hmm. I'll just call him son in case he doesn't want to get flamed on the yeah. show. Can you run to the deli and grab me a large matzo ball soup when it comes back in? Fills your soul with goodness. Do you know, my wife still talks about the day when she had a terrible cold mm. and Elijah Wood turned up at our door <gasps> with a big pot of uh, chicken noodle soup. Uh, and she, wow. she thought that was the kindest thing. And this she was still talks during about the movie that. or just randomly like This is ra- just... like way after. Wow. Like wow. 10 you years ago. You guys really are a fellowship. Wasn't we that are. nice? Well, does she not talk about the fact that a couple of weeks ago I bought yeah. her a all bells and whistles Italian meal? Or has she just forgotten about that? She, do you know she's never brought that up? Really? Mm. <laughs> you could have a bolognese, you could have a ragu, you could have a bruschetta. There'd still bottle be enough wine. room for a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. She's not said a thing. And I'm wearing a T-shirt. So I'm gonna wearing rip, a I'm gonna T-shirt? Rip it. I'm going to rip it. You, you, bought her, you bought her books, you bought her gifts. Never, never what mentions are, what, it. What has she done for me? And what is the only thing she ever brings up is Elijah Wood brought her soup once. Wow. Well, we know who her favorite is. Mm-hmm. I mean, Elijah's pretty charming. He He's is. a wonderful <laughs> man with massive eyes. Yes. I mean, just spookily massive eyes. Yes, it's a, it's, it's a problem. I think his kids have uh, adopted those eyes as well. 
Um, we're going to listen to some music now. We are? There's, okay. a, re- there's a regular feature in the show. Okay. Uh, it's nonstop this show, isn't yeah, it? I, there's a lot going on. I'm, I'm, I'll just try. I'll, I got I to gotta get one of those uh, nondescript energy drinks. To oh, yeah. Going. We're almost going. done. Okay, Sam. okay. Thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, thanks. This has been a blast. It's a really, really fun. Now, you've brought to us a, a kind of established funk meister. Um, it's a little indie artist. I don't think you've you've heard of him before. Right, okay, Mr. let's let's have a listen. Mr. Yeah, I don't know if you've let's see been exposed. Do oh, I, but the sky. Oh, amazing stuff. But yeah, he, Brilliant. he played all the instruments on that whole album. He's like Prince. And the whole album. Yeah, and all the vocals. That's Inner Visions, right? Yeah, isn't that's that? Inner Visions, yes. I chose I I don't I didn't know what song to choose. So uh, keeping in the theme of of when I first moved to LA, that was a song that I listened to a lot uh, when I first moved to LA because if I can if I can name drop for a second, Please. One, one of my Please. one of my first gigs in LA was I was the apprentice editor on a on a Quentin Tarantino film. Which film? Woo-hoo! Jackie Brown. Oh wow, great movie. Um, and uh, he is a music lover. Yeah. Uh, we actually edited the movie in his house in his basement. So I was in his house all the time, and he had stacks and stacks of CDs. Yeah. Sorry, we're old. Yeah. Uh, CDs at the time of just music everywhere. Every just music, music, music. And uh, one afternoon, he was just like, hey, just take some. T- take whatever you want. Just Aww. listen, take whatever you want and listen to it. And he's like, try try this one. And he threw me the Inner Visions disc. And I listened to it like nonstop. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And it just, so it reminds me of like my my uh, my time uh, when I first moved to LA. Brilliant. And what an extraordinary artist, Steve Wonder. Unbelievable. Originally called Little Stevie Wonder. Yes. There you go. Because he because he came on first onto the scene at he like was a kid? 14, yeah. 15, right? Just yeah. a protege. Were of. you guys kid actors or kid performers? I mean, we were acting, but we weren't getting paid for it. No, we? I wasn't. No, I was a kid bookbinder. I used to make books. You made books as a child. Well, not as like a child. As, a, as an eight-year-old, you were. <laughs> but that was the, the first book binding, real. That the was workshop. the first real job. Oh, okay. Okay. My first job was at a uh, post office sorting mail. Oh, God. Yeah, but get this right. This is so stupid. You would be awful at that. I was terrible at sorting mail. With my mate Martin Kilheaney. Hi, Martin, oh, if I you're watching or listening. Hi, hi Martin. And we went, we went to this post office, just a sorting office. You know, piles right, and piles right. of mail come in. And then, you, and then you go, right, this goes to Liverpool, this goes to London, this goes to Sheffield, whatever. And for some reason, <laughs> myself and Martin Kilheaney tried to convince the other men in the sorting office that we were members of the biggest boy band in England at that point. Which was? Take that. Take that. Take that where Robbie Williams came oh, from. Oh, that's right. So I told, well, we told them that I was Mark Owen. No. <laughs> and he was Jason Orange. And we would do dances for them. And they must have been looking at us thinking, you guys are so stupid, because why would you be (laughs) sorting mail for like two quid an hour when you're the biggest pop band in England? And we kept it up. They must have been laughing at us. Maybe maybe everyone knew that Robbie was going to go solo and the band was going to break up. Yeah. That was a tragic story. That's just, I I remember there's times in your life where you look back and you're kind of mortified. I remember thinking, what were we doing then? But I was such a fan of Take That that I just went for it. Um, (laughs) My son was skating. I told you this, and uh, I dropped him and his mate off. At the ramp? No, at uh, his mate's house. All right. And his dad came up to say hello. And I was like, I recognize him. And when I drove away, it was Mark Owen Mark from Owen. Take That. Wow. Who was kind of, before Robbie kind of exploded in Take That, Mark Owen was consistently thought of as the sexual dreamboat, wasn't he? <laughs> and I also, when they split up, I liked his music the best out of all of them when they all did their solo shows. Quite soulful. Talking about music, you oh, write yeah. the music right for your character. Oh yes, my character s- Yes, my character sings, and I also I also uh, co-write the music that he sings. Really? They uh, are brilliant yeah, songs. Thanks, I love them. They're funny. funny. Ah, Thank I'm you. Choking in a mat so I, I That's understandable. It's a it's a thick soup. It's brilliant, bro. Anyway, we give this uh, marks as well. 
Tell them oh, how we do this one. You're, you're ranking Stevie Wonder's yeah. yes. classic yeah. yes. we rank, drug anthem. We, yeah. we rank these songs based on levels of funk. And it levels goes, of funk. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. It goes from Brahms, who you could argue has no level of funk whatsoever. I, no. All the way up to <laughs> Prince at his most purple, which is a high level of funk. Yes. And we've actually scored it before on Stevie Wonder. I certainly have. Um, does anyone want to go first? Well, you do. I would rate this song at Sly and the Family Stone peak level funk. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it's it hard is, to get higher than that. And funk can mean a few things to a few people. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, you funk. know. Funk. You yeah. often have a funky sack. I do. <laughs> I would put this with, I mean, it's pretty, it's you pretty can't get funky. more funky. So you're funkadelic. Yeah. I'm saying it's Funkadelic. You're Funkadelic. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's funky. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's I, pretty funky. I, I'll give it nine out of ten George Clintons. Oh, well, it's a George oh, Clinton oh, level of fun. Right, yeah. it's up there. These are all iconic funk meisters. I mean, Stevie Wonder's back it catalog. Is, it's an amazing album. I can't believe you've got that album from Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, he has doubles of everything. He's a sloppy guy. He had a, a lot of extras of things around the house. He's he got just... a little bit of cash to splash around, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> we met Stevie Wonder. Do you remember that? No way. Uh, yeah. We met him. Billy and I went to one of these very, uh, you know, bougie uh, gifting suites. You know, these things that happen I've sometimes. heard of them. I've never been to one. You'll be going, Sam. <laughs> no, it won't be long. So around award season, I don't think it's happening this year and hasn't happened for a while. Around award season, because so many people flock into Los Angeles, some of these companies will set themselves up in hotel rooms and invite people to come in, maybe take a photo with a, a product, and they'll give you that product. It's kind of, I'm embarrassed. Ugh. It was true though, isn't it? Ugh. And we were at one of these things because my mate Greg, who uh, accidentally uh, suntanned only part of his face. Whoa. Yeah, so he was like two face. <laughs> From from the Batman story, he really was, and he went to the Emmy. Wow. So I'll try and keep, keep this story very short. I flew him out to LA to come hang out with us for the Emmys. I think, right? I can't remember what it was for. We were staying at the Wyndham Bellage Hotel, now the London Hotel. We were at the pool for breakfast. Billy and I said, "Okay, we're going to go mooch about on Sunset Boulevard, have some fun." Said to my mate Greg, "What do you want to do?" He was like, "Mate, I'm I've not seen sun for like eight months. I'm going to lie here by the pool and get some sun on my side, on, my on side. one side." <laughs> and we said, "All right, we'll we'll come back in a couple of hours. Get ready, get dressed." He fell asleep by the pool and completely suntanned oh the side of his face. And he when he so when he showed up at the Emmys, he was trying to only get photos on one side. Wasn't he? Wow! Billy was in hysterics. It was um, very funny. That's amazing. But wait, why did why did I mention him in terms of? Um, Stevie Wonder. Oh, we're, so so we were at a, we were at a gifting suite. My friend Greg used to work for a, a clothing line called Bench, and they had a little setup at okay. the place. So Greg said to Billy and I, "Will you come to the booth and take some pictures in some Bench attire and stuff?" Sure. And we did. And as we were leaving, Stevie Wonder showed up. I mean, that's, he did an old, that's yeah. a superstar. Uh, that is a, yeah. an icon. A legend. An icon. And for the right reason, he's yeah. making yeah. amazing stuff. Extraordinary artist. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Hey. Hey. It was a good song. Have we run out of time? Yeah, we've run out of time. There's a couple of facts here about Too High, but I don't think we're going to get round There's to no it. There's no time, Dom. We'll um, just say it's brilliant. Yeah. He was stoned when he wrote it. He was stoned when he recorded it. Too High. Yeah. It's exactly. great. That's all you really need to know. This has been a fantastic <laughs> episode. Um, please, you guys out there, go watch Vox Machina. It's available on Amazon Prime internationally. 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 And honestly, it is absolutely wonderful. I loved it. And up to now, and it's going to get even better because Don Monaghan's going to be in it. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Hello. Playing a Scotsman, and the entire time I was playing this Scotsman, I was thinking of Billy Connolly. Oh, oh, what a close, close that one. <laughs> oh, what a kick in the mats of balls. <laughs> All right. Hey, Sam, it's been brilliant having you on. Thanks for having me. This is so much fun. Maybe you can uh, come back at some point and uh, help us out with our continued adventures into trying to get Billy to play Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. Let's yeah, do it. I, I, I really enjoyed that little five minutes that we did. We're, we, we, can make it, we can make it a full hour next time. I would love brilliant. it. Thanks a lot, Sam. Sure. It's been Thanks brilliant. A lot, Sam. Thank you. Harmonize with
with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl.